Hello everyone and welcome back to Space Basics. In this video I'm going to talk about how rockets control themselves, how they maintain stability, and how they maneuver in space. In the previous video we had a rocket launch but I didn't really talk about how it was being controlled and also we didn't really do a very good job of controlling roll. It seemed to roll on its own and we had no way of stopping that. So why is that? And that is what I'm going to be covering in this video. There are many ways that rockets can control themselves. The one that is most common is that we take the whole engine, and if I can draw this properly, uh, okay, we take the whole engine, we put it on a mount, and we turn it. Uh, we turn the whole thing, so the rocket engine can turn that way or that way, and then in the other axis it can also turn. And so this will redirect the thrust. The center of mass, let's say it's over here, if the engine is turned so that the thrust goes in this direction, uh, then the rocket will tend to tilt this way. If the rocket, if the engine is tilted the opposite direction, the rocket will tilt that way. However, the engine can only be tilted in two dimensions. It can be tilted this way, that way, and then if we turn the camera, of course the engine can also be turned in this direction. So that is direction number two. So we will call, it doesn't matter which one we call pitch and what we, which one we call yaw, but we're going to call one of these pitch and we are going to call the other one yaw. Uh, pitch uh, will be towards the horizon, pitch is towards the horizon, and yaw is going to be mainly dealing with heading. So, but really the difference between the two is a roll of 90 degrees, uh, so they are interchangeable. And in fact, if you lose control over one of them, you could use roll. If you have roll control, you can use roll to try and fix the other one. Which brings us to roll. Roll is the one that you cannot do with a single engine. You need two engines, or you can use something else. Roll is along the axis of long, uh, so longitudinal axis. Longitudinal axis. So let's tilt the rocket like this. Roll is in this direction. So let me just clear all that. And what we mean by roll is this way. <laughs> Suddenly, anytime I use the scroll wheel, it changes the size of the brush. But okay, yeah, like that. So that's the third dimension of rotation. Now we can't do that with one engine. One engine can only do the pitch and the yaw, which are the more important things. So, there needs to be some other mechanism except for tilting the engine. Tilting the engine is just one way of controlling the rocket, but it is the most common way. Uh, we need some other way of controlling roll. So, the Thor rocket has multiple ways of controlling roll. First, it has fins. Now, fins only work in the atmosphere, but they're very good uh, as far as that's concerned. Because it is the atmosphere that does a whole lot of the unintentional rolling on you. And that is because of wind gusts, which we don't experience in Kerbal Space Program. Ah, uh, gosh. Okay, wind gusts that we do not experience in Kerbal Space Program, so it'll just, because of the wind or differences in air pressure, uh, cause the rocket to roll. And so the fins, because air is passing over them, will maintain stability and stop the roll. So the fins are good for stopping the roll where the roll is most likely to occur and would be most severe. But, once you get into space, there is no air passing over the fins, so they're not going to work like that. So, we need some other mechanism, and in fact, the Thor rocket has a second mechanism, even on the first stage. Okay, these tiny little things right here are sort of steering appendages to the main engine, and in some uh, systems, they are actually taking some of the gas generator exhaust. The gas generator is the turbo pump that helps feed the fuel into the engine. It'll take some of the exhaust from the turbo pump in order to uh, feed these tiny little rockets. Otherwise, they could be independent little rocket engines too. And these are called verniers. Okay, verniers are just steering rockets. That's what we're going to call them. They're usually much, much smaller than the main system. And they also uh, usually gimbal. 
which means so they will also be turning the entire engine if you will will turn but they're really really small but because there's more than one of them they can control roll by turning in opposite directions so one will turn one way the other will turn the other way and then they can control roll and so the main engine doesn't need to worry about that and on some systems the main engine may not if the verniers are strong enough the main engine might not gimbal at all because it's inefficient to have the main engine gimbal and it can also put too much stress on the launch vehicle. So instead of having the main engine do the gimbling, then the verniers do the gimbling instead. So on the first stage, what we would normally expect is we have gimbling. The fins can also be controlled. Uh, in other words, these, I believe, were fixed fins, but it's also possible to have controlled fins so that they can provide steering instead of just stopping roll. So there's two kinds of fins, uh, fixed, which stop roll and controlled actually I'll say three kinds of fins controlled uh, which uh, can do yaw pitch and roll because there's four of them it'll be enough or uh, fixed tilted which is to create roll <laughs> and you go why would you want to uh, whoops why would you want to create roll well that's for uh, roll stabilized rockets uh, no I don't think any orbital rocket right now used roll stabilization those are generally just short-range rockets but what they'll do is they'll tilt the fins pre-tilt the fins and in fact let me uh, just demonstrate uh, we have the winglet there we can just tilt them very very slightly and you would want to do this for all of them just very slightly and then the rocket will roll in this direction and that will ensure it stays pointed in the direction of the roll it'll keep going in the direction but if you actually want to turn it like for orbital rockets we no normally want to turn it uh, so that's horizontal uh, this sort of way of tilting the fins in order to create a roll stability, uh, a spin stabilized rocket, is not beneficial if you're trying to maneuver the rocket later. You, you, in that case, you just want to go in the direction that it started going. And a lot of the spin stabilized rockets will tilt in a more horizontal direction to begin with. So the whole rocket, the whole rocket will be tilted like that. Okay, and then three verniers. Verniers. So supplementary. Small rocket motors. Usually gimbaled. And provide uh, yaw, pitch, and roll. Okay, so those are the first three methods. Uh, but again, fins are only in the atmosphere. Uh, gimbling uh, works no matter what, but sometimes we might not want to turn on the main engine, right? Especially if we are already in space. We don't have to, we don't want to have to light the main engine to do everything whenever we need to turn, especially if the goal is to turn to make a maneuver with the main engine. So we want to turn first, point in the right direction, and then light the main engine. We don't want the main engine to have to do that part. So the gimbling is not so good if it's the main engine in order to steer the rocket in space. The, the verniers will still work in that case if they're not tapping off of the gas generator in order to run, if they're a separate rocket motor. But there is a fourth system. There is a fourth system that we can use, and this is most commonly used when we are already in space at least if not already in orbit and this is on the upper stage generally oops generally speaking and we can see some of these on here actually they're really tiny but they are present this this is the second stage and second stage engine and this set of tiny independent rockets is a different kind of system not verniers and these are called RCS or reaction 
control system or RCS. Very small rockets, no gimbling. If they're gimbaled, uh, it would be preferable to just to call them verniers, perhaps. And uh, high relightability. Relightability. <laughs> I hope that's a word. Anyway, um, they are meant to ignite very frequently and in short bursts. Short bursts. Uh, verniers, normally long bursts. Long burns. Uh, often they're ignited as long as the main engine is on. So to provide constant steering. The RCS is not constantly firing while at any point. It'll just do little short bursts. But if we take a look at how... So those are the four. Make note of them. I'm getting rid of it. Uh, so here we have four of them. Uh, actually, uh, potentially eight, but we'll talk about four first. And we've got one here, one here, one here. It's possible we have additional ones, one here. But I'll talk about the what I'd consider to be the main four first, and then we'll talk about the others. So we have one that's going to be shooting stuff out this way, one that's shooting stuff out this way, one that's shooting stuff out this way, and one that's shooting out stuff out this way. And these four are going to be controlling pitch and yaw for something in space. Uh, normally reaction control systems or RCS aren't uh, optimized for surface. They're space optimized. They have the space nozzles and everything. And they operate at very low pressure. RCS, low pressure. Low pressure and pressure fed. So they don't have turbo pumps. And that's, so, that's to facilitate the fact that they light so often. Uh, pressure fed helps things to light often. To relight. Because you don't have to run the turbo pump each time. Uh, low pressure also uh, reduces wear. as opposed to the vernier engines, which might have a high wear. Now, uh, note about the term vernier, it's sometimes used in a way that I'm not using it here. For instance, the verniers on the space shuttle are actually smaller than the RCS and act like RCS. They just wanted to use a different name for it. So anyway, so we've got pitch and yaw if we've got four RCS thrusters. Normally they call them thrusters, RCS thrusters, as opposed to engines. Instead of calling them engines, because they uh, relight so often, the common term is thrusters. So thrusters are the ones that relight a whole lot. And we've got four here, but we're missing roll, right? So let me clear everything because we're going to turn the camera. So that was uh, this one, this one, and this one. But we also see, if we go really close, some really tiny ones here. Okay, and this one is pointing like that, and then there's one on the opposite side that's pointing like this. So what those two are are the roll thrusters. So if we go to the upper view, uh, one is going like that, one is going like that, one is going like that, and one is going like that. Okay, so those are the upper ones. And if we want to uh, roll this way, this one and this one will produce a roll like that. Because this is firing and it'll push the rocket this way. And when this is firing, it'll push this side of the rocket that way. And so those two will produce that. And then to do the other way, uh, the opposite two will fire. So that is how you control roll with those. So if you want to make sure that your rocket has the ability to turn in all three axes, you can set it up like this. Uh, these are currently close to the center of mass, the roll ones, and that's to optimize their control over roll. 
So let's talk about uh, where to put the thrusters. Roll thrusters, close to center mass. Center, and that's the yellow sphere that we've got there. Pitch and yaw, far from center of mass. However, however, uh, because we're so we're not very con uh, concerned about roll usually. It's okay if the roll is slow or inefficient, because roll isn't something we do a whole lot of in space. Uh, it's possible to just move these roll thrusters down and build them into the lower ones, even though it's far from the center of mass. It'll take some uh, effort from the computer system to sort of balance out the fact that it's going to end up creating. What happens when you do that is it creates a residual, a little bit of pitch or yaw that it wasn't supposed to, and then the computer is going to have to detect that and use the pitch and yaw thrusters to cancel that out. Uh, but it, it might be better uh, because then you can put all the RCS tanks all in the same place like down here and all the feed lines down here instead of having another set up there even though having the roll thrusters closer to center mass uh, would be more efficient. So yeah, generally you'll actually see the roll thrusters built in to the bottom system here. And uh, yeah, we'll uh, see some examples of those well, I'll go through some real rockets in the next video and we'll see A, how they deviate from what I talked about in the previous video when I talked about optimizing stages because there are reasons why real rockets don't always have uh, the optimal stages and we'll talk about that in the next video. And we'll also see where they place their stability and maneuvering systems in real life. Uh, this one, the Thor rocket, is actually done very well in terms of it basically has all the things everywhere. Uh, so it, it, uh, it's uh, sort of nifty like that. It actually has additional thrusters because uh, this engine, the AJ-10, uh, can relight. It has infinite ignitions. It also is pressure fit on its own. And that is because it is made to relight so often. And in order to relight in space, you need to settle the fuel down, and so we also have downward facing RCS thrusters here. These are facing down, and I'll just clear that. They could also be used to control pitch, yaw, pitch and yaw, no roll. Uh, those would not be sufficient to control roll. If they were able to gimbal, they could control roll, but as they are right now fixed, they cannot control roll. Uh, you need these roll thrusters, but those facing down are primarily to make sure that the fuel gets settled. What happens is, in space, the fuel sort of sloshes about and floats to the top, or floats all over the place. The point is that these little thrusters uh, push, that pushes the rocket up, and as you are in the car, if the vehicle is uh, getting pushed in one direction, you inside get pushed in the opposite direction, and so the fuel uh, gets pushed down because of inertia, and fed into the bottom where it can get into the engine and so forth. So those bottom facing thrusters are mainly to allow the engine to restart in space. Uh, those aren't necessary if your engine is not restarting in space, though if but there's a whole other matter of spacecraft that need to dock. And if you were trying to dock to something, you definitely do not want your main engine to be the only way you can move forward or backward for that matter. That's one set of uh, RCS thrusters that this rocket does not need. Uh, most spacecraft that need to dock, and only if they need to dock, they'll have another set of thrusters up here that provide thrust like that. And so they'll have the ones at the bottom providing thrust down, and they'll have another set providing the thrust like that so they can slow down. So these will be to speed up, but without using the main engine, and these will be to slow down as they approach the dock. But the slow down thrusters are only needed for docking. The speed up thrusters are it can be for orientation. They can also help with pitch yaw and roll. Two, fuel settling. But they're not the best for pitch and yaw. These thrusters here do pitch and yaw better, but they would not be useful for selling the fuel down or obviously moving forward. 
um, they're also in the wrong place for docking. So we talked about the roll thrusters can be moved down uh, and they'll be fine. But another situation is what if you need to translate? So what if we want to move the whole thing side to side instead of rotate? This is rotation. These are rotational. But in space, there are three rotations. Those are the pitch, yaw, and roll, and three translations, translational axes. Rocket, the main rocket, if it's not going to dock to something, doesn't care about the translation, only for docking. So you only have to worry about the rotations for the rocket itself. But if you are going to be a spacecraft that's trying to dock, first you're going to have the slow down and speed up thrusters. That's one axis. Slow down, speed up, that's one axis of translation. Uh, so speed up and slow down. Let me just call it that. Speed up, slow down. Then we have up, down. left right from the point of view of somebody inside say the spacecraft itself uh, this would be like left right and then uh, sort of like that way or that way would be up or down depending on your orientation and then we would want to put additional thrusters close to the center of mass so these close to the center of mass uh, and this would always be done with RCS so translational axes um, yeah, always RCS. If you talk about fine control. There is one other way to do rotations uh, that we have not talked about, but it's not used on rockets and it is not used on most spacecraft. It is used on very, very large uh, space probes like space telescopes or used on stations. And the last method, so let's just list all of the things. Again, gimbling, fins, verniers, reaction control system, and the fifth one, which is uh, it goes by uh, different names. For instance, on the International Space Station, it's called Control Moment Gyros. But in Kerbal Space Program, you'll most often, and uh, in a lot of applications uh, for satellites, you'll hear it called Reaction Wheel. And small satellites can have them too. Uh, CubeSats can have them. Uh, the idea is that you're going to have a spinning mechanism, and that's up to you how you want to spin it. But usually uh, electricity is used and when some little thing is whirring and spinning inside the rocket there is conservation there's another conservation we add conservation of momentum but there's conservation of angular momentum so if you have conservation of angular momentum if you got something inside spinning one way the whole rocket will spin in the opposite direction. So if the little thing is spinning really fast in one direction, the whole rocket will spin slowly in the opposite direction. I say rocket, I mean spacecraft. It's, all, it's always a spacecraft that does this. So the reaction wheels use power to spin a little small thing really fast in one direction so that the rocket rotates in the opposite direction. But that's not really great for rockets that need to have things happen very quickly because it takes some time for it to turn like that and so it's usually something like a station which can take its time to move or a space telescope which doesn't need to turn very quickly so there you have it those are the ways uh, maybe i'm forgetting something but those are the ways that rockets and spacecraft control themselves and uh, we'll see them in action in future videos of course uh, this has been a lot of talk, but we will benefit from seeing them at work more than just discussing them. So once you see them do their thing, it will be much clearer about how they actually work together to make things happen in space. So with that, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.